On this episode of China Uncensored, who let the dogs out of the truck so they wouldn't become dog meat? Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. So brace yourselves, I'm about to show you the cutest thing ever. That cute little fellow is Nibble, a Tibetan Mastiff. They were all the rage in China a few years ago, a veritable status symbol, along with black oddies and the terrible, terrible rubbing alcohol-like liquor they call baijiu. People would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for these Tibetan Mastiffs. According to the New York Post, one Chinese businessman spent $1.9 million for a single dog. At the peak of the Mastiff craze in 2013, According to the Tibetan Mastiff Association, there were 95 breeders churning out pets to fill China's insatiable appetite for Tibetan Mastiffs. But unfortunately, like any bubble, it's now burst. Now, only half of the 95 breeders are still in business. The rest have gone bankrupt. And so, what happens to the dogs? Well, at least some still have an insatiable appetite for Tibetan Mastiffs, since Nibble nearly became Chinese hot pot. Nibble was part of a truck full of Tibetan Mastiffs and other breeds that were on their way to be slaughtered for their meat and fur. And they were only going for about $5 a head. So how could all this happen? Well, part of the problem is just how insane the Tibetan Mastiff craze was. Not only were people paying ridiculous sums of money for them, but it also became a get-rich-quick scheme. Some dogs were pumped full of silicone by their owners to make them look bigger and more impressive so the dogs could be sold at higher prices to would-be owners as well as breeders. Now, believe it or not, that's not healthy for the animal. In 2013, a man sued a Beijing animal clinic for $140,000 after the dog died during a facelift surgery. But there were also other problems. For instance, Tibetan Mastiffs are well adapted to the snowy mountains of the Himalayas and are used by nomads to defend their livestock because one Tibetan Mastiff can kill several wolves. But they're not so suited to, say, a small city apartment. There were a few instances of them killing people, not because Mastiffs are vicious, but because they are so intensely loyal and protective and they don't take kindly to strangers. Combine that with the fact that many cities in China, including Beijing, have banned large dog breeds, and so this massive craze was doomed. Which is how Nibble found himself loaded onto a truck with other dogs on their way to becoming hot pot. The conditions in the truck were terrible. They hadn't been fed or given water. Many had broken limbs, and a third of them died. The only reason Nibble was saved was because Chinese animal rights activists intercepted the truck and used their own money to buy the dogs. China still has a long way to go on animal rights. Unregistered dogs are beaten to death, sometimes in front of their owners, as was the case with this little guy, One-Eyed Jack. Then there's the infamous Yulin Dog Meat Eating Festival. But pet ownership in China is skyrocketing, and with it we're seeing more and more animal rights activists. In August 2014, truckloads of dogs were spotted in the northeastern city of Tangshan. They were most likely on their way to be slaughtered, and they were most likely stolen, since many were still wearing collars. Using social media to coordinate, hundreds of dog lovers blocked the trucks and rescued more than 2,000 dogs. And even though Chinese animal rights activists have been unable to shut down the Yulin Dog Meat Eating Festival, Many have used their own money to buy as many dogs as they could. Because how could we let someone nibble on nibble? So what do you think about the Tibetan Mastiff craze? Leave your comments below and be sure to subscribe for more China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Interested in learning the Chinese language? We're restarting our YouTube channel, Learn Chinese Now. If you're interested, click on me. Now, as an American propagandist, intensely jealous of China's rise, I'm torn. On the one hand, I want to portray China as America's greatest threat.